Hey folks, this is Chris. Tonight I'm going to talk about fear and parking. I've now been living in my RV for the past three weeks while traveling. Now I say traveling in air quotes because that means I've been, I left where I was at for a year in the RV and now I'm in a new location. <laughs> I'm not out boondocking in the most amazing spots right now, although my last series of videos have been just exploration videos and I really like doing those. I've been going out and finding really cool places to explore and produce videos of them and that's something that I've really wanted to do. But from a nuts and bolts standpoint I want to get back to part of what my YouTube channel is about and that's about coming into the nomadic life if this is what you're going to consider and also if you're going to get an older vehicle like I did um, kind of working with that. So uh, the issue that, that I want to talk about tonight is the parking thing. So you may get a vehicle and then go out and boondock in the most amazing places. And in that case, find some BLM land and just park and have a great time. But for me, practically speaking, I needed to be in the city for a while. So practically that means that I had to find parking. That means that I had to either find a place to stay at an RV park. And in St. George, there are a bunch of them. There are lots of RVs in the city in terms of lots of RV dealerships and RVs and RV parks, but I didn't want to do that. I mean, that those RV parks can get very, very expensive. And I have a solar setup on the RV, which gives me the ability to have independent power. I mean, this video was being recorded via solar power. And so that meant being able to find parking on the street. And that is a bit of an art form. And this was one of the things that I had some anxiety about. I had a lot of anxiety about this, was thinking, is this actually going to work? I mean, this is not something where, I mean, I suppose I could have rented an RV for three weeks and come down and parked, but that would have been super expensive. I had watched enough videos to know that people do, in fact, stealth park in the city. And a lot of people said, oh, you can't do it in something other than a small white van. And well, what I found out so far is that that's not exactly the case. So if you're going to need to be in a city for a while, and whether it's just transitioning from one boondocking space out in the wilderness to another one, you need to come into the city for a while, or whether you're going to do it for a more extended period of time, like I've been doing, I'm finding it to be very doable. I was watching Will Prouse's channel, and he talked about some of the things about you know, boondocking in the streets. And he's got some very good tips. And one of them that he gave was to use Google Maps and use the process of hunting for streets and certain characteristics of streets and locations that you want to find. And I found that to be very useful. And so far, Google Maps has been incredibly useful for finding parking. And in both Cedar City and St. George, the two cities that I've been in so far, I've been able to successfully find good parking using the methods that I outlined in a previous video, which are basically kind of common sense. Look for a place that isn't marked for just two or eight hours or doesn't have other obvious parking restrictions via signs. For part of it here, the curb is painted red, albeit it's been worn off, but there are some old signs here that say no parking, right? No parking anytime. So this is an obvious area that that uh, I couldn't park along, even though it's a nice stretch. Stay away from residential areas. Make sure the street is wide so you've got plenty of space to park and you're not going to be blocking anyone. Uh, I found it to be very common sense. If you look for areas that seem like you're not going to be blocking anyone or being in anyone's way, and there aren't any signs telling you you can't park there. And, you know, you're in a commercial area or a semi-commercial area, uh, then you can find parking. And I've now been able to park in Cedar City for two and a half weeks successfully using these rules. I've stayed out of the way of high traffic areas. I found that parking next to RV dealerships has been very successful so far. I've been able to park next to two of them. In fact, I'm parked right next to one of them right now. The first one that I parked at, I had identified the street and the location on Google Maps 
and it was at the end of a little cul-de-sac so there wasn't it wasn't like traffic was going to be constantly flowing and it was on a city street it wasn't on private property which is a big no-no with the exception of Walmart or Home Depot if they give you permission but it looked like from a distance that my RV was just part of the RV dealership except it wasn't it was on the street so it kind of afforded me a little bit of the sense of security so uh, what I've done is I've identified a place on Google Maps and then because I have a scooter I've been able to go out and pre-check them which is fantastic that's exactly why I wanted to have a scooter was because I could go out and I could check these locations and in fact with the scooter I've been able to identify a couple of the parking spots that I didn't necessarily initially see on Google Maps but became apparent to me once I rode by on my scooter so the first place that I parked was in a commercial area an industrial commercial area I stayed there just for that one night and then that that got me into the city and I was able to um, move on to the next location that I was able to stay at so I was I was able to park in next to the initial the first RV place for three or four days and it was on actually it was almost five days but it was it was this holiday week between Christmas and New Year's right so a lot of things were closed and it was quiet and it was already quiet because it was the end of the cul-de-sac there were some very nice features about that but I also did not want to overstay my welcome so within the particular region I identified just a series of spots that I was able to park at for two or three days and then I would move so that I was never becoming like a permanent fixture in a place which I felt could attract attention so at least here in St. George I've been able to park in these four locations and I could probably easily cycle between the four locations and there are a handful of others that I will probably stay at in fact just around the corner from me there's there's another long stretch of road that I had identified that I actually have to drive through to get to where I'm at right now there is a massive class A boondocked on that street and so just when you think well even a big class A probably couldn't boondock well there it is right uh, so that has allayed a lot of fears at least for this first leg of the trip of my journey into living in the RV it's it has been easier than I anticipated and I know that's probably going to change from city to city and from location to location but so far it's been an easier process than I had hoped it would be and um, I, I have identified a couple of other areas that I'm going to go park that are up on a plateau one of them is in a neighborhood and uh, you're probably saying well didn't Chris just say don't park in residential areas it's a neighborhood that's in pre-development the streets the, the public streets are in place and it's up on a it's, it's up on a bluff St. George is surrounded by bluffs and it's up on a bluff but there not even foundations for homes are laid yet it's just the streets are in place and that's it so I'm gonna go park up there and there's one other place that I'm gonna park that's just above this this area so this is exactly why I wanted to come down to a city and live in the city for a period of time on the streets in my RV to know that I could do it to kind of work through that fear of what is that like and it for me it's serving multiple purposes and as much as I love the videos of people running out into the middle of the wilderness and living in the wilderness and that's something I'm going to try at some point for me from a practical standpoint being able to live in the city has been a very important thing to establish it's also helped me to know um, to establish that I can you know find propane that I can find water that I can find trash that I can, th some practical things that I wanted to be able to live in the city and go through the routine of establishing various things for instance finding propane um, the R the RV dealership that I initially parked right by they had propane I literally was able to take my external propane tank and walk it down the street and get propane from them and I subsequently found that a gas station just two blocks from there also has propane and they 
have a trash can and they have water. So I took my RV up there and I was getting propane and I said, hey, would you mind? I notice you've got a, a water spigot over there. Could I fill up my five gallon, a couple of five gallon jugs? And the guy says, yeah, that's fine. And then um, I was able to just, they have a big public dumpster right there that I was able to take some trash out. So those are the kind of things that I wanted to be able to establish initially with, by living in a city. And it really went a long way to help me overcome my fear of being able to do this as a process. So anyway, um, you can do it. If this is what you want to do, if you need to be in the city, you can do it.